you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater who he who is in the world. First John four four. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Southeastern Conference, represented by JJ and his wife, and the, um, who else is Southeastern Conference? Thank you so much, Southern Conference, Pastor Kevin Morris, and uh, Pastor Stephen Clement and his wife. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, everyone, that's coming to celebrate it today, this special day. Thank you, Pastor Phil, for your support, your encouragement for the ministries, Pathfinders, Adventures, Youth Ministries. We appreciate all the kids, all in being here. And this is a special day. I have a, a message to share that it's, it's a, a call for consecration. Let's pray. Dear Father, I pray that you may open our hearts to the Holy Spirit today and open our hearts for your message. May we put our hearts and our lives in your hands because you love us so much and you gave your son for us. And pour your Holy Spirit upon each one here that we may glorify your name. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. A call for consecration. What is consecration? Consecration is to give everything, the whole heart. You should give everything to Jesus. Your plans, your life, everything you are, everything you have, you put it on his hands for his glory. Because we are created by God, and he created us to glorify his name here on earth. And the two points I want to I wanna make it with this Bible verse, we were, I bought us some notebooks, four notebooks. And then I told Rebecca, Sarah, and Elizabeth, you choose one Bible verse and you write your memory Bible verses in the book. And the first Bible verse Rebecca wrote, it was, I am of, you are of God, little children. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And I was thinking, wow, this Bible verse is so deep and it's so beautiful and has two great lessons I want to emphasize. First lesson, we belong to Jesus because he loves us so much. He gave everything to us. He gave his life, gave, he gave everything. And the other lesson is that he who is in you, it means um, he is in us. It means we are dependent upon the Holy Spirit. We cannot live without the Holy Spirit. We cannot do anything without the Holy Spirit. And then I just realized, if we have the Holy Spirit, you have everything. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you don't have anything. And then in my house, I made a, a commitment with the, the kids and branch. Let's pray every day that God may pour your Holy Spirit upon us. Because when God pour your Holy Spirit upon us, then we are going to reflect God's character in the church, in the home. It's when God's character will reflect in us that the church will shine in the world and Jesus will come. Jesus is coming soon. And uh, what uh, is going to happen is we need the Holy Spirit because God wants to, to reflect his image in us. It's the Holy Spirit that transforms our hearts and makes a new person. So what is consecration means? You only can consecrate yourself to Jesus if you know how much you are loved. You know how much God loves you. You only can consecrate yourself to God. The second point is if you know that you cannot do on yourself. You depend wholly on the Holy Spirit. And what he is saying to us today is that we need to abide in the vine. Abide in me. And it has to be daily. This consecration is daily. And has the, the message is in Steps to Christ is very familiar. And they say a prayer in the morning.
morning. Consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your very first work. Let your prayer be, take me, O Lord, as holy thine. I lay all my plans at thy feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me and let all my work be wrought in thee. This is a daily matter. Each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day. Surrender all your plans to him to be carried out or given up as his providence shall indicate. Thus, day by day, you may be giving your life into the hands of God, and thus your life will be molded more and more after the life of Christ. What that means is that we need to drink from the living water. The living water is the word of God. It's the word of God that he will write in our hearts that we may not sin against God. Is also the bread of life. And I want you to imagine, imagine that you are walking in a very narrow way. It's very narrow. If you go a little bit, you can fall. It's, it looks like when you're walking in the water, like Peter was walking in the water. Remember when Peter was walking in the water, on the water, and then the secret here, if you have, you have to behold Jesus, by beholding him, you become like him. So you cannot, the three points, you cannot look. You cannot look to yourself, your, yourself, like your own. You cannot look to your weakness. Oh, how bad I am. How weak am I? You cannot look to your goodness. How good am I? How amazing am I? No. You have to look to Jesus and his goodness because we are created to reflect his glory. So we cannot look to us because we may fall, and we will fall if we look to ourselves. Ourselves, we cannot save ourselves. So don't look to yourself. Look to Jesus, behold him. Every day, behold him, so you'll be transformed in his likeness. There, the second point, you cannot look. You cannot look to others. You cannot look to what others' faults are, what others' goodness are, what the others uh, may criticize you and, and you got hurt. You cannot look to others because we are all sinners and we are all mortal. The only one that you can look is Jesus because we, we may hurt each other even if we don't want to. Sometimes we get hurt, but it's not even intentional. And, uh, and we need to forgive as Jesus forgave us. And he gave everything for us. So the lesson is, don't look to others. Don't look to the criticism. Don't look at how others are doing because we are incapable to judge others. God does not allow us to judge others. He is the one that only him can judge. Now let's say the third point. The third point is you cannot look. You cannot look to the waves. The waves are the storms of life. It's, it's the pandemic, it's the, the tribulation, it's the, it's the financial difficulties, or whatever difficult it is. Or sometimes it's not a difficult, it's a pleasure, it's video games that you like so much. It's a, it's, it can be something that is totally worldly and addicted. Don't look to that. Jesus can help you to overcome anything. And this is the altar. The altar is where you tell Jesus, Lord, here am I. Transform me in your likeness. Take away anything that separated me from you. Take away anything that, uh, that it can be um, a distraction. Because we are going home. You need to know who you are. You are a treasure. You are a child of God. Like the song say, I am a priceless treasure, forgiven and chosen forever. Jesus wants you to, he wants to come and take you home. He wants to take me and you home. And we are always home. And today the message is, let's give ourselves completely to Jesus because he is worth it. He is the one that, he is the one that created you and he wants you. And uh, when we give ourselves to Jesus, he transforms us and he lives in us and it becomes not I that live, but now Jesus lives in me and 
his victory is our victory. So that's why the Bible verses say, because he who lives in you is greater and have overcome them. Who we have overcome? We have overcome all these uh, temptations. We have overcome the evil one because the victory of Jesus is our victory. The righteousness of, of Jesus, he imparts in us. And when we come to the throne of grace, we have a Jesus as our father and also our intercessor. God is a holy God. And he come and say, this is my child. I died for them. And I want to write them in the book of life because this is, I paid the price. So a life in Christ is a life of restfulness. There may be no ecstasy of feeling, but there should be an abiding, peaceful trust. Your hope is not in yourself, it is in Christ. Your weakness is united with his strength. Your ignorance to his wisdom. Your fa frailty to his enduring might. So you are not to look to yourself, not to let the mind dwell upon self, but to look to Christ. Let the mind dwell upon his love, upon the beauty, the perfection of his character. Christ in his self-denial, Christ in his humiliation, Christ in his purity and holiness, Christ in his matchless love. This is the subject for the soul's contemplation. It is by loving him, copying him, depending wholly upon him that you are to be transformed into his likeness. So I really like it. John 15 that they say, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, he can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and it's withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask, and we will, and ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Here is in my Father glor glorified, that he bear much fruit, so shall be my disciples. As the Father have loved, loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in, in my love. So the secret is abide in me, and we will produce many fruits. And uh, there is a there is a tree in my house. I have two trees. One is orange, is one tangerine. The tangerine is very big and has a lot of fruits, beautiful fruits. And every time I pass to the tangerine tree, I think, well, I want to be like this tangerine fruit tree. I want to abide in Jesus, then I produce many fruits for his kingdom. And what are the fruits of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and all the fruits, self-control, faithfulness, gentleness, patience. And this is a gift from God. The Holy Spirit is one of the best gifts of God. So that's the secret is abide in me. Jesus is calling us, come to me and abide in me. And uh, we are reading, me and the girls, we are reading this book, Christ Object Lessons. And uh, it uh, has a lot of uh, beautiful lessons about the tree and about the seed. And uh, sometimes the God is not, the, God is not done with us. We are in transformation every day. So might, uh, that's why we cannot uh, judge others because it might have a seed that is germinating. We are, that's why the tears and wheat has to, grow together and we cannot tell which one it is because we are not, it's not our job to do it. And it says that if, if uh, true holiness is wholeness in the service of God, you need to give everything to God. This is the condition of true Christian living. Christ asks for an unreserved consecration, for undivided service. He demands the heart, the mind, the soul, the strength. Self is not to be cherished. He who lives to himself is not a Christian. So if we don't give everything to Jesus, we are not a Christian. He, he cannot give half heart and half away. 
We need to go and give everything to Jesus because he loves us. And there is another part that says, If a man love me, Christ said, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode and with him. The spell of a stronger, perfect mind will be over us, for we have a living connection with the source of all enduring strength. In our divine life, we shall be brought into captivity to Jesus Christ. We shall no longer live the common life of selfishness, but Christ will live in us. His character will be reproduced in our nature. Thus shall we bring forth the fruits of the Holy Spirit, some thirty and some sixty and some of a hundred. And there's another part that says that when we abide in Jesus, we, we want to become a servant. We want to serve him because it's like a gratitude. You're grateful for what he has done for us. And then you want to do for him whatever he wants us to do. And they say, if we love Jesus, we shall love to live for him, to present our thank offerings to him, to labor for him. The very labor will be light. For his sake, we shall covet pain and toil and sacrifice. We shall sympathize with his longing for the salvation of men. We shall feel the same tender craving for souls that he has felt. You know, feel the, the craving for souls as he felt. We want to work for others because he worked in us and he saved us. So this is like, Jesus is the light and this is the, the bigger light. It's like the planet Earth, the planet Earth has no light in itself. We don't have any light in, in ourselves. So then Jesus is the light and we can shine, we can reflect his light. And here is, is ourselves. One light represents represent ourselves, reflecting his light. The other one rep represents my family, reflecting his light. The other one, all the creation, all the world he created, reflecting his light. And the other one, the community is also in the church will reflect his light. And everyone will be enlightened. There's no darkness when Jesus is present in our lives. It's the presence of Jesus that comforts us and the presence of Jesus that makes us stronger. Have you felt the presence of Jesus in your life? Amen. Have you felt a lot of times that God delivered you from a difficult situation and made you strong? Because sometimes we go through tribulations and the trials Remember that it's the father that pruned the tree. It's the father that applied the knife. So it's a loving father that wants to make you stronger. It's a loving father that wants you to overcome. Sometimes the trials and temptations come that we may be stronger, that we may have a character build up. I want to invite you to every day put your life in consecration to God. Come to Jesus every day and say, here am I. I want to give, I cannot live without you. Tell me what to do. Abide, I want to abide in you. I want to produce the fruits of you. Come to Jesus and not, and surrender everything. Surrender yourself to Jesus. This is the commitment I want to invite the church. And this is a very special commitment because you're going to see that the character of Jesus will be in you. This is this is something that is gonna happen without even you think about it. I my job is abide in Jesus. And I wanna finish with a story. It's one of my favorite stories. Is when Daniel and his friends, they were captives in a foreign country. And they, well, they knew that God loves them so much and they gave their hearts to Jesus. As little kids, they learn how to how precious they were and how God is holy. So they were not with their parents. Sometimes you are going to grow up, you're not gonna be with your parents. You have to make the decisions on your own. If you know how much you're loved and how much Jesus cared for you, you're gonna be able to stand 
with his true understand what is right. So they were in a foreign country, and the three of the friends were there. And now everybody is called to worship the image of the gold image. And what happened? The three uh, friends, they did not bow down to the image because they knew that they could only bow down to God. And that's the love of God that we need to develop. A love that I know who God is, I won't uh, uh, worship other gods. That's the character he wants to produce in us. And then they say, okay, the king said, I will give you another chance. I need to, I give you another chance to, to bow down. And then they say, you don't need to give me another chance because if God wants, he's going to deliver us. And this is my favorite part. God is able to deliver us from the fire. But if he does not, even if he does not, we are not going to bow down. They knew that the God was capable to deliver the presence of God were in their lives. But they, even if we die, because God's love is stronger than death. Even if we, we die, we know that we are going home with Jesus. Then even if you give your life to Jesus, you know that he has a place for you and for me. And then they were faithful. And the, there are many stories in the Bible like Joseph and others that are also faithful to Jesus. So if you want to give your heart completely to Jesus and say, here am I, Lord, I give everything to you. Please stand and I will pray for you. Dear Father, here we are, Adventures, Pathfinders, Master Guide, Pastors, and our church. We want to surrender everything to you, give our lives completely to you, that you may shine through us, that your you, your character may be reflected in your church, and that the whole message will be preaching the whole word, and you come to take us home. Take us as yours and make a servant of you. Lord, we give ourselves to you completely today. And please help us to walk in your ways and write your words in our hearts that we may not sin against you. Thank you for each one that is here. And please keep them in your hands. In Jesus' precious name, amen.